Just be happy. Why not? Just be happy. Don't stop. Ladies and gentlemen, it is that time once again for the Happy Show. And I am called Happy. And you too can be our guest on our show too. So give us a call at 415-573-5549. That's 415-573-5549. And tell us what happiness means to you. And today we have a very, very, very extremely special guest, Bhatia. And she's going to tell you about what she does to make people happy. And a fantastic art, the way she serves people. And tells them about the things that they need to know about themselves. And to tell them what happiness really is in her turn. Well, how are you doing? Excuse me. Helped you on the show. Thank you very Good. much. Good. Glad to be here. You know, uh, how do you pronounce your name exactly? Can you tell the audience what it really means, you know? Bhatia means daughter of God in Hebrew. Mm. Batya was the uh, Pharaoh's daughter, and she was the one that rescued Moses as a little baby um, when he was put in the basket in the reeds. So. Yeah, Moses. Uh, now, can, can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Because people like to hear about Moses, you know, and <laughs> that whole ideal. Do you mind? I don't mean. Well, I don't know. They can read. Bible, of course, but of course. Uh, it's a common name among Orthodox Jews. I actually got it when I was my given name was Betty B E T T Y, but I was working on a kibbutz in Israel when I was 18, and mm. they kind of made me have a Hebrew name by just taking the B T Y, the the, the mm-hmm. letters of my name, and putting Hebrew vowels under it, and I got the name Batia. Batia, yes. Wow. So wonderful. I'm so glad to have you on this show here, the spiritual wonderful light. Thank you. And what I have is special people on my show like yourselves, you know. Because you. people out there are hurting, you know, and they have this funny ideal about happiness. And they think happiness is money. And they think other people make them happy. And, uh, you know, they are really hurting because they can't seem to find happiness. Mm-hmm. So um, what can you tell us what do you think happiness would be to you or um, how they can find them? Well, I think people are happier if they are in touch with the true destiny of their life. Mm. And uh, what I actually practice is transformational palmistry. And uh, mm. I've talked a lot about it in this DVD that I put out. It's called Utilizing Palmistry to, to Change Your Life. And... And um, also I do this column for the Santa Barbara Independent, and I put out a little book called Opening Palms, and they, people can find it if they just put Opening Palms into a search engine. But um, I've spent years um, uh, helping people find out uh, what their true destiny is in this life. The destiny line is this line that goes up the center of your palm right here. Oh, the thick one, the thick mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Going up the center. So yes. uh, normally... Um, are you familiar very much with Hindu cosmology or anything? Well, uh, not as much as you, but can you inform me a little bit on this? Well, sure? there's a, I also do Vedic astrology, but there's a there's the idea that there's an akastra, which is the guiding uh, light of the soul that takes you from one incarnation to another. Uh huh. And so the akastra takes you into a particular incarnation with a purpose, a life purpose. So mm-hmm. you have a something you're supposed to learn in each lifetime. Wow. So, so uh, let's say the left hand gives you the, the, uh, what you're supposed to learn, like the curriculum for the class, and the mm. right hand shows you how well you're learning what you're supposed to be learning or what, how on course you are for the, for the Nakashtra's life purpose. So is the left hand a format for the right hand, pretty much? Uh, it's kind of like this is your potential and this is what your reality. So this is the... the what your soul had in mind for what you were born to do, and this is how well you're doing it. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. So you so, can actually look at someone's hand and see if they are on track, so yeah, to speak. Yeah. yeah. And people who are miserable and unhappy, they're kind of like sludging around and they're not really on track. So when I do a palm reading, I say, oh, well, you know, this is what you were meant to be doing, and mm-hmm. you're kind of not really doing the right thing, so let's try mm-hmm. to get you on course. And I, I've also trained as a spiritualist medium, so sometimes I get images that are not directly indicated just in the lines, 
and I do an intuitive reading and I sort of say, well, I see you going off in a red truck to the north. Mm -hmm. And the person goes, well, yeah, I've been thinking of, this is in, Argent in Buenos Aires, I've been thinking of like going up to Cordoba and, you know, living with my son. And I go, well, that's definitely what you should be doing because I see a little red truck going up there. So I kind of help people get happier by getting in touch with their true life course. Wonderful. You know, I'm hearing this. You, hear, you wear more than one hat here. Yeah, I, mean, I have a lot This of is amazing. <laughs> I mean, this is incredible. And you do the tarot card readings. You do palm. And then you, uh, you, you, you're in the, I call it a sensitive intuitive. You're a medium, so to speak. Yeah, well, you know, I, I uh, started off probably reading tarot cards for myself in the early 80s. And uh, the first time I had a booth was at the Michigan Women's Music Festival. And I actually had a booth to sell my own art and my own poetry books. Mm. But people knew that I did readings. And so I started doing readings for other people. And what people really like to have is the story of their own life. Uh, you know, they like my poetry, but if I tell people poetry about themselves, they'll pay money for it. So I, I went in the direction of Wow. That. Yeah. That's interesting. Very creative, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. On the spot, too. Right? Yeah. You just put the energy to the... Yeah. So when you do a reading, you lay out, you do a blessing, and you lay out the cards, and each card is like a poem, and you interpret the image of the poem mm. that, that comes in the cards, and then you, you do a... a a fiction, you, you, you connect each poetic image and tell the whole story of what's happening in the person's life. And you you do a blessing and you call in the spirits and so you have the help of the, the energy of the spirits from the other side that come in and help. So wow. it's kind of like a, a collective unconscious and you work with archetypal images. And so well, this is a special thing that you do here. You're not just reading, you, you, you are actually incorporating it into a format that they can really understand it and relate oh, yes, to it. Yes. It is the, very clear. The, the goal is definitely to help the person to understand. That's mm -hmm. how I work as a reader. I don't like to mystify and say like, well, I'm the doctor, I'm treating you, you just shut up and I package and I treat you. That's not healing. That doesn't help the person. That makes the person unhappy. Yeah. What makes the person happy is if they can uh, uh, they can uplift themselves and participate in the healing wow. so that it's uh, I'm healing, you are healing, yes, we yeah. are all healing together rather than I just act on you. you we're healing ourselves, yeah, right? You're basically, yeah. you're and, and, and I just want to emphasize this because a lot of uh, spiritualist mediums, a lot of channelers, they... they they get people around them sort of like a cult and everybody follows the leader yes. and, and followers get disempowered. Of course. And that doesn't make me happy as a reader and I don't think it really makes the followers happy. Oh no, either. unless they love following, of course. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. That's it's just, just my bias. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, before I uh, continue, um, uh -huh. I remember once, uh, I, I know a lot of people, a lot of people know me and I, um, uh, you know, you come on the happy show, they see the happy show and it's mm -hmm. very been over about three years now. But anyway, this, uh, she says, you know, you, you're like the doctor that don't prescribe the medicine. Yeah. She says, you, 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 you're like the, uh, 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 the teacher that doesn't lead me. And I wanted to say... The teacher, the teacher... Well, the doctor that doesn't describe the medicine. Right. You know, or the, the, the teacher that doesn't really force an ideal, you know. Exactly. And, and I thought about it, and I didn't answer the question, but as I'm speaking to you, uh -huh. and I'm really understanding what... My method of appreciation is for a person to find it for themselves. Exactly. It's the most effective. And when I heard mm -hmm. you say that, mm -hmm. and I and I it gave me confirmation of why she said, because my delivery, I mean, I've tried everything under the sun. She fought it, and so for everything positive, it was negative. So the best thing to do is to let a person hear themselves or to find it for themselves. Exactly. Self-motivation and self-discovery is the... Yeah. yeah, I'm also a teacher. I'm basically an online instructor now. I teach mm -hmm. at a couple different universities, and mm -hmm. I've spent years face-to-face in, -face in the trenches in classes, too. And, and I always do this... Uh, student center type teaching where yes. the student proposes the idea and they they know what they're going to do and I make suggestions to yes. the student um, because the student has to be invested in what they're learning exactly and, and it's the same with the healing yes. so in a, in a tarot reading or a palm reading uh, you know so I say well you know like like for example if this line is very separated from this line it could be in a number can you of hold it up for the camera a little bit then yeah, yeah. well yeah. Let, let me look at your hand too. okay Okay, so like in this hand, I don't know if the camera can see this, but you see how this line is very separated from this line? Yes. This is your right hand. Are you left-handed? This or right is right. Hand? I'm, I'm right-handed. This okay. is my right hand. Yes. So it could mean that you're, um, you were raised by, uh, you know, a, a single mother. You, there could have been alcoholism in their family. There could have been a workaholic in the family. There could, but there's a separation. So the child coming into this family was born to be an independent spirit without a lot of mentoring 
uh-huh. walking their own track wow. without a hand coming down to guide wow. and hold that person. Wow. But I, n- I don't come out and say, oh, you were raised by an alcoholic. You ca- right, I understand. I yeah. ask the questions. Of course. You know, like, what helps lead the direction. Like? Yes. Yeah. So by this time, the person is invested in because they're providing the information. Yes. You know, so, but sometimes people come and they go, I'm not going to tell you anything. Because right. You're supposed to <laughs> no, figure it all exactly. out. You're, yeah. If you're any good as a psychic, you're going to know everything. Yes, yes. You know, you, you've got to provide everything. And right. I, so it's more like... Um, I work more in a like a collective consciousness um, yeah. way. You know, your part. We're all we're all one. Yes. And what happens is the veil comes down. Yes. And we're all looking at the placemat together. It's like you're part of this pedal and I'm part of this pedal, and we're looking at the center together, and right. we're using our mind unveiling to examine the whole. Yes. And so a lot of times, what happens in the course of a reading is people become very attached to me because what they experience is connecting with the divine light. Of course. So after the reading closes they go away but they have a supercharged attachment to me because they remember everything about this reading that was lucid and and they think I'm like super right and well I'm just a person that gave them a reading but they might have this hard high charge connection with because me. of the divine light yes yeah, yeah, yeah. because me, of the divine light that they felt yeah, yeah. excuse me one second I appreciate that I have yeah. to since I don't have commercials here I gotta right. let the people know where they are ladies and gentlemen <laughs> yeah. how you doing once again my name is happy and I'm in the happy show and you too can be a guest on the show just give us a call at 415-573-5549 it's 415-573-5549 and tell us how we can be on time and be happy. And what <laughs> happiness means to you? Yes, we have a very extremely, extremely special guest, Bhatia. Here, and she does many, many things to make people happy. She actually helps people find themselves. Yes, not a psychiatrist or a doctor, or lawyer. He, she helps people to find themselves. And you know what? In turn, they end up being held happy. You know, we're gonna get back to her. She, I know you see her contact number on the screen and everything else and so forth and so on, but she's going to tell exactly how she can contact you and make you happy or how you can find out to make yourself happy. In turn, you will make someone else happy and you really would be happy. All right, so sit back, relax, and enjoy yourself. Here she is. Yes, we're back again. So, so one of the things I do in terms of helping people make themselves happy is that sometimes there's discrepancies between... The left hand, which is the potential, if mm-hmm. the person is right-handed, and the right hand. And so I'll say, like, well, I see that <coughs> your 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 heart line doesn't reach the Jupiter mound, which you want it to do if you want success in relationships. So I encourage the person to make a painting or a Xerox and then, then make their line in their favorite color all the way to the right, to the Jupiter mound here. Mm-hmm. And then to meditate on that so that they can actually transform their lines. Because actually what this is, is the soul is coming into the body Mm -hmm. and trying to shine through, but the body has developed blocks, the brain has Mm -hmm. developed blocks, so that what I'm trying to do is get you, get each person who comes to me to be able to reform the the channels for the Mm -hmm. divine light to shine through, so Mm -hmm. they can actually re... Um, reopen those channels and ex- and make the light come through and experience happiness in their lifetime. Wow, fantastic! Yeah. You so know, well, but most people when they think they go to the palmist, they say the palmist is going to tell them, you know, this is going to happen at a certain stage. Yes, and yes. I say, no, what I'm going to do is help you transform something if you don't like what you get, yeah. what you see. Yes, but you still have to do the work yourself. First, you have to right? do the work yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's really interesting. I, I have a something that happened to me. Maybe you can explain it to me. Um, mm-hmm. I was sitting up, standing up, whatever, I was just going through my day naturally, and I actually felt a line shoot through my hand, and I knew exactly what it was, and I looked down, and this was the particular line here. Uh I saw it, it shot straight through here, and it was a lot darker. Is that right? But I felt it, and I knew exactly what it was, and I looked at it, it was the first... What does that mean? Why was I able to fill well, it in? Well, because you went through a change. I've seen lines change in the course of a reading, for example, when somebody made a decision. Mm-hmm. Wow. So the lines can change. When I give people these, these prescriptions, because I actually do give people prescriptions. I, used to, I went into a Xerox shop once, and I said, I want to make up a prescription pad. And the guy behind the desk said, that's illegal. Mm-hmm. And I said, fortunately, my daughter was with me. And she said, no, no, no. She means a prescription pad for when she makes assignments for Right, when they right, go yes, palm reading, yes. so I, goes, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. so it says, you know, these are you, these are your your potentials, and and these are the remedies for your issues, right? Mm. So, I would have remedies at the bottom, and the people will go home with the remedies that they have to practice, and uh, and 
so the people have to do the remedies and they, and I go so you're going to do these drawings and you're going to meditate on it and I always say because they say are the lines going to actually change and I say mm -hmm. don't focus on whether the lines are going to actually change but then I say yes the lines will change mm -hmm. um, actually this was a French palmist her name was um, Marie Anne Adelaide Le Morand mm -hmm. and uh, she practiced in the French courts um, in the 19th century and mm -hmm. in the 19th century in France uh, she kept very specific carbon files of people that came to see her like every two weeks and then uh -huh. she would see if the person's lines had changed and then she would give them another thing and they would go out and uh, mm -hmm. and come back and so it used to be a very high science in France and so people have known in other ages and in other cultures that you could follow the lines changing on the hands we've lost touch with that yes. just like we had the witch burnings and we buried all well, that let me ask you about that now that you mentioned that too. Um, I heard you very clearly. I'm very interested in my guests and I'm glad again to have you on the show. Mm -hmm. And I heard you speak of uh, the divine light. Mm -hmm. And and everyone knows what the divine light is. Everyone mm -hmm. knows the Godhead, regardless of religion, the spirituality, God's reality, you know. Uh, they But then they hear you talk about the palm. The palm. And the palm reading, of course, they don't go hand in hand. And people share about mediums and stuff. But they. They, so how do you explain the, the divine light in all that you do? Well, um, the first time I saw light coming through the palms mm -hmm. was actually when I was painting portraits of people's faces in a mental hospital. And I was painting their energetic color faces, you know, mm -hmm. and then I saw light coming out of their hands, so I started doing portraits of hands. Mm -hmm. And I knew nothing about palmistry. Yeah. But I knew that I was painting colored light and coming out of hands, and I think I knew nothing about divine light either, but all I knew was I was madly painting portraits of hands, wow. and I just put the knowledge away. And, um, and then a few years later, I was at the Michigan Women's Music Festival, and a woman was taken off the land to a mental hospital, and a bunch of us alternative healers got together and made a proposal to have a, uh, an alternative to that happening at the music festival, mm -hmm. and it was called Oasis. Wow. And in the process of setting up Oasis, some woman came up to me and said she wanted to read my palms. And I said, oh yeah, right. I thought she was just coming on mm -hmm. me or something. But she read my palms, and um, and I, it was accurate, and I was very, very surprised. And again, I just put it away and didn't think very much mm -hmm. about it. But uh, meanwhile, I had developed as a tarot card reader, mm -hmm. and I was in Mexico on Isla Mujeres, and I was making a living supporting myself reading mm -hmm. cards. And, um, if someone wants to contact you, how can they contact you? Oh, uh, my, my email is up there. I know it's up there, but can you say it also? Oh, it's B-A-T-Y-A-W-E-I-N at AOL.com. And my cell phone number is 216-233-0567. And, and uh, actually, if you go to Opening Palms, uh, it's the Santa Barbara Independent column that you can click on me through the Independent. And the Jewelry of the Goddess dot info is a web page. And it explains all about my palmistry readings too. And uh, but but anyway, yeah, she talks so modestly, ladies and gentlemen. She just throws it out there. And she's oh, doing I'm a sorry. great service to make oh, people yeah, happy, yeah. you know. And I guess being humble and modest is part of the gift of giving. Oh, you know? yeah. it's a, it's but wonderful. but when I was working in Mexico, um, the locals there on the island on Isla Mujeres uh, felt that if I could read cards, I should be able to read palms. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I went back to Tepotzlan and got basically initiated into a palm reading order. Mm -hmm. And somebody who was a, a Roma, he took my palm like this and he said, everything you need to know about palmistry is already within you. And I thought he was just sluffing me off. Right, you know? of and course. I went yeah, back yeah. To the Romeo and Juliet kind of a yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. I went back and yeah. I read all these palmistry books yeah. and I started reading palms. And within three weeks, I just dropped reading cards and went entirely to palm reading because on the Caribbean island, all the cards would blow away in the wind anyway. Uh -huh. But I became so fascinated with it and there was such validity to it. And I just dedicated myself to palmistry after that. But there's a science to it. When, when I started working for the Santa Barbara Independent doing a newspaper column, I started a lot more of the research and there's you know thousands of years behind this it originally started in india and um and then it came you know wait a minute before West. we go uh, i'm gonna ask you a question i just have to talk to the guests real quick this is no commercial today ladies and gentlemen once again my name is happy and we are <laughs> the happy show you hear people laughing in the background sometimes my dog would be laughing too because <laughs> then you know the right place at the right time the right people doing the right thing they are actually channeling their energies to make someone else happy so they can be happy Yes, so give us a call, 415-573-5549. That's 415-573-5549. And tell us what it means to be happy and what happiness means to you. 
For those who tuning in for the first time or who took a break and came back and missed the part, we have a very extremely special guest today, Bathia, and she has the special gift of making people happy and making happiness a part of their being. So sit back, relax, and enjoy yourself and tell us what it means to be happy. <laughs> hey, we're back again. Yes. So, now, um, you went to India recently, I understand. India. Right, yeah. And I uh, heard so many things about India. Uh, they, they say it was a spiritual place. Uh, people gather, they, you can be in one mansion, and I think we've got about like, three minutes left. Oh, that's yeah. all, yeah. So, but but uh, what's the most rewarding thing you found in, in India for you? Well, um, this trip I was actually able to visit uh, Bihar, and I'd wanted to go for years to this um, this place, and I actually got to interview women painters in Mithla. This, this, oh, wow. Beautiful. Yeah, I've gotten energy for years from doing these paintings inspired by this women from oh, the Madhubani beautiful. district, and oh, yeah. I got to interview women on oh, what yeah. they experience when they Can open nervous. up the other side over there? I mean, it's good. Yeah, yeah try to college. unfold the other side over there. Yes, yes. Uh, yes okay. yeah, 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 good. Thank and you. I do a lot of art inspired from the divine female. and. Um, oh, wonderful. That is so beautiful. Now, this was uh, from one of the artists in India? Yeah. I think this is by a 13 year old girl. Wow. Yeah, they Look grow the up colors. painting Durgas on their houses during the Durga festival in their kitchens, like all the wow. mothers, all the women in the family. Well, look at that profound and richness the colors are. Yeah. You know, it's, it's such a. Uh, the place is not always royally rich. In, in oh, no, this is the poorest region in, in wow. uh, India. And uh, actually, Indira Gandhi was traveling there in the 60s during a drought, and the women were um, building roads like on our WPA project, and they wow. were barefoot and saris. And she went into the houses and she saw the paintings. She said, Let's give them paper, and the rest is history. Wow. And now I'm importing this art and selling it and giving workshops on painting from the divine feminine, and actually mm -hmm. having participants have the experience of painting in this style in order to to discover how to make art without thinking they have to be artists, and it's a wonderful experience. Yeah, yeah, it's your passion. Listen, do I, I want you to do me a favor. Uh, give me your phone number on the air. I know I didn't have any information. If you, if oh, it's 216 233 0567. And I do do readings, um, you know, over the internet and on the phone and uh, through the mail. People send me Xeroxes of their palms and I do Skype readings, I do Skype tarot readings, and um, I also made in India this year my own tarot deck, it's a fantastic oh, is that possible to make your own tarot deck? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. I give workshops on reading and making your own tarot, so oh. I, I use um, art that I've collected from all over the world in my own deck, I don't know if you can see this. Oh yeah, so wow. Yeah, and, and some, of the, some of the paintings are, are, are from some of the images are from the Spotify art. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when I do readings, you know, these come up, and um, and some of the art that comes up is from my own art, and even okay. from clothes that I've made. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, um, <coughs> here's here's my daughter's face from when we were at the Saraswati festival, and it's all covered with powder. Mm. And, you know, so I take photographs, and some of my own paintings are in the deck. And wow. this was a fan. I'd wanted to make my own art deck for years, my own tarot deck. This is some of my jewelry that I make. I didn't even get into talking about mm. that. But sometimes at the mm. end of the readings, mm -hmm. I want to give people something to take with them to carry the energy of the reading with okay. them. So this is an ancient winged Hittite goddess that I turned into silver, and she helps you go down into your depths and right. rescue your last parts and takes you up the mountaintop singing. So she's a very transformative healing wow. goddess from about 30,000 years ago. So oh, at good. the end of the readings, I, I sell this jewelry to people to, if they want them to take them with them. And so some of the images of this jewelry is in the deck as well as some of my my paintings that I've made. I work a lot with our, uh, very bright, vibrant colors. This yes. is from, um, from uh, Bodh Gaya in India. So well, India know, is just extremely inspirational. Inspirational. You yeah. find a lot of people uh, in that poor country, are they happy? Do they present happiness? Even yeah, though, but, you know, uh, so when I, I was introduced as a teacher uh, on this research trip, I'm just writing an article about it now, and, mm -hmm. you know, 20 people from the teachers' union were driving around to take me around, and we went into the school, and there were 20 people from the school, and I was trying to conduct an interview with this 13-year-old about the art that she made, and then mm -hmm. we went into the village, and people were streaming up with their art, 
And yeah. Asha Devi is a very famous artist from there. And they were saying, I'm Asha Devi's niece. I'm Asha Devi's uncle. I'm Asha De you know. And everyone yes. was coming to sell me their art. I came home so broke from the trip. But, you know, my heart was so enriched. Of and uh, it was just, the, all these people are making this beautiful, vibrant art. Yes. And they're living in, you know, what we would call poverty. Yes, and they were happy. And you they, made them happy. They were happy. Yeah, and they were happy. overjoyed to see me yes, and to yes. talk about their art. Yes, yes. And then every time I sell a piece of this art, which yeah. I'm going to do at the National Women's Studies Association this weekend in the Oakland uh, Let them know convention. real quick on the air. Look in the camera. Let them know about oh, this yeah, weekend. Oh, yeah. The it's National Women's Studies Association is this weekend in the Oakland Convention Center, November 8th through 11th. So probably while you're watching this, you could pop down and buy some of this beautiful art that I just showed you at the booth and hear me talk in person about my research trip to India where I've interviewed women artists this year. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry. That's it. I'm yeah. hate to let you know I got to go. That's all, y'all. That's it. We got to quit, you know? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm so glad you're here yeah, and um, thank you, Happy. Thank you so much for having me you know i like to do an exchange a little later and put two minutes to give you divine light without touching you would you like to do that oh, yeah thanks. and then probably just tell me a little couple things without yeah, yeah yeah you made me happy happy oh well thank you very much but you made me happy and my dog loves it too you know <laughs> it's a very exciting time here to be alive uh -huh. and to spread and i find out giving is the same as receiving in that order yeah. with a sincere heart you know yeah, so i appreciate true. you you're doing a wonderful service thank so you. thank, thank you. you so much for being on the show ladies Ladies and gentlemen, I hate to let you know, I got to go, y'all. That's it. I got to quit. You know, give us a call at 415-573-5549 and tell us what it means to be happy or what happiness means to you, okay? Now, the best way to be happy is to make somebody else happy and see how you feel, okay? Thank you, everyone. Be happy. Don't stop.